everybody, it's Aiden here once again, and welcome to something nice and chilled and hopefully educational at the same time, as I'm in a set of Corsa to talk about the contentious subject of frame rates. Now obviously since I'm a super talented professional sim racer now, I need to maximise everything to ensure I get in the best performances on track. That just makes me sound like a colossal anus. I mean, I am, but I don't want 40,000 people knowing that. Anyway, frame rate. We see on forums and Discord servers all the time. If it drops below 144 frames a second, it becomes literally unplayable and I have to spend more time optimising this game developers can't get right from my system. While others will be... Pfft, yeah, 60 frames, that'll do. Drops to 59 every once in a while, but it's alright. No problem. Just having fun, really. And up until recently, I was one of those guys content with only 60 frames a second, simply because, being someone who uploads sim racing content sometimes to YouTube, I'm rendering, streaming, or uploading at 60 frames a second. So what's the point in rendering the frame rate on recording higher than that, because YouTube's going to squash it all down to 60 anyway, right? Or is it? Is it all just wasted frames? Will running higher frame rates be more beneficial to going quick and being more consistent? Now to help illustrate this, I'm going to refer you to a video by Linus Tech Tips, and I'll leave that video in the description so you can watch that later. And in that video, they use CSGO to illustrate the advantages of higher frame rates in first person shooters that I will attempt to illustrate with my lackluster MS Paint skills. Now all frame rates are, are static images that flick through one by one that give your brain and eyes the illusion that you are seeing a moving image. Like uh, one of those flickbook animations that you might have seen. There's one in Hot Fuzz, so rent that film and absorb what's going on. But everything you see, cartoons, films, television programs, sports broadcasts and stuff, are all static images played one after the other. And usually this rate is 24 of these static images every one second which gives us 24 frames per second. At least that's how it was a few years ago. It's probably 30 as a standard now, and your HD sports broadcasts are probably closer to 60, but that's by the by. Anyway, this is Colin. Colin is a terrorist. He's a very classy terrorist because he's wearing a top hat. And we need to shoot Colin because Colin is a bad guy. Now, at 30 frames a second, Colin would effectively be skipping across your screen. At least, if you were to watch the footage frame by frame, he would appear to just be jumping across your screen. If you double the frame rate to 60, those gaps would be filled with double the Colin, giving you effectively twice as long to line up your shot with less guesswork of where he'd be, and you'd be more consistent at shooting Colin in the face. Bump it up to 120, and it would look a lot smoother. Now in a first person shooter where you're aiming at a smaller target, which is a CGI generated human being in this case, that's going to be many beneficial. But what about sim racing? It's just brake turn gas, right? Should be fine, it's a much bigger frame of reference, a much easier target to hit. But can improving the frame rate improve the lap times, or at least your consistency? So let's find out in Assetto Corsa, where I'm going to lock the frame rate to 30, 60, 75, which is the refresh rate of my monitor, and we'll do a bit on that in a bit, and then full unlocked to see if higher frames make you a more consistent driver. And notice how I said more consistent and not better, because better still takes practice. So I'm going to drive this, the Ferrari SF70X, which is just a SF70 you know, V6 hybrid 2017 Formula 1 car with V10 performance and isn't available yet for download before you ask because I haven't finished it yet, at the Circuit de Catalunya to see what is what. So a car and track combo I'm quite familiar with, all in the name of science. So now I've bored you with the theory, let's get on with some driving. Alright so here we are then at the Circuit de Catalunya in Barcelona, pluck first gear, give it some jandal, come on, oh there we go, and already this feels very weird. Very, very weird. Hard to believe that about 15 years ago this was considered normal. 30 frames. But somewhere is a breaking point. 
could do with a couple more clicks of break bias, I think. Turn four, again. Oh. <laughs> I think I turned in a bit too early there. Front end just slid. Oh, there's a breaking point and turning point in Apex there somewhere. Come on. This is so weird. Just guessing now. I reckon if I spent a few hours doing this, I'd probably get there eventually. But straight out of the box, not good. Missing Apex is everywhere here. Right, a proper time lap, let's do it. Where's my breaking point? There. About the 100 meter ball, but it just feels like I'm breaking so much earlier than normal. Try to do this as fair as I can. Oh, Jesus, turned in a bit too early. Lost front end grip entirely. Deja vu. Still locking the brakes in the rear. I'm actually struggling to focus right now. It's like I've never driven this sim or this car before. Still surviving somehow. All right, corner goes on forever. Can't wait to go back to 60 frames. One twenty one dead. Okay, that will work. <sighs> that was hard work. That was very hard work. Right, let's bump it up to uh, 60 and uh, get some normality going around here. <sighs> Okay, this feels a lot better already. It's so much smoother. Easier to turn in from the apex. But it will be interesting to see what happens when we turn the frame rates up later on. But here we go for a time lap. Feels a lot less like a slideshow. Looks like watching something on PowerPoint before. Not the gear I wanted, but okay. So I've got to be at a 21 dead, really. This feels a lot more normal because this is how I play a set of course and normally with locked 60 frames so obviously it's going to feel a lot more natural I'm starting to think I could probably break a lot later though Nineteen five. Not bad. So one and a half seconds just by adding thirty frames to your second. So now we need to add fifteen more and see what happens at seventy five. This should be interesting. I don't think I'll go much quicker than this. But uh 
yeah. Let's, uh, let's see what happens. And before we get into the 75 hertz one, well, sorry, not 75 hertz, 75 FPS one, is that FPS and refresh rate aren't the same thing, and there's a million videos on YouTube about that, so go and check one of those out if you want to learn more. This is just a, a bit of fun, really, more than super serious science stuff. So here we are, at least. I mean, I, straight away, I'm not seeing anything different between 60, uh, 60 frames a second and 75 frames a second. Uh, I think we're at the point now where the actual difference is going to be negligible, but let's uh, see what's what with this anyway. Let's see how it feels when it comes to actually driving full tilt around here. It's only a 15 frame gain, so I'm not expecting massive improvements, if at all. at the end of the lap. Nineteen four. Whew. So the next uh, the next one is one that I haven't done and that is full unlimited frames no no cap at all uh that's actually the first time i've driven over 60 frames a second in a set of Corsa ever i've only ever had it limited to 60 so let's unlock all the frames and see what happens next final lap let's go all right final lap then got about 130 to 150 frames a second here and it does feel a bit smoother i'm not gonna lie And then again, the refresh rate of my monitor is only 75 hertz. So on a 120, 144 frame, well, sorry, 144 hertz monitor, it probably would look a lot smoother. Let's see what I can do. Only having to turn the wheel once now instead of having to correct through a corner. Easier to correct that slide. Really leaning on the rear brakes of this car right now. 18.8 fantastic stuff I found it a lot easier to just spot things that time round because let me just drive up here a bit and show you when I did the 30 frame a second clip I was breaking here at the 100 meter board or this little white line then as it went on I slowly got closer to this orange bit here and that really helped. That is my braking zone. And then I could just swing it into turn one, as you saw on that time lap. It's weird. 
uh, it, it's hard to describe because of the way that the frame rate is rendering. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I'll put that Linus Tech Tips video because they, they explain it a lot better than I can. I just wanted to see if it worked for me, to be honest. And uh, it looks like it has. So taking a huge chunk of time out. So I'm going to leave a set of Corsa unlocked from now on. R Factor 2 already is unlocked. And I've noticed uh, some performance gains there. Uh, as you probably saw last week when I uh, did that thing at Zandvoort, um, which I still can't believe I did, to be honest. It's just mental. I, I, I don't win races. I don't win things. That's that's pretty much it. But uh, if you have thought that this video was interesting and are thinking, well, I've capped my frame rate, I might leave it unlocked or at least bump up the limit a bit more, then you know, give this video a thumbs up to make sure I've, I've done my job correctly. And Like I say, it's just a bit of fun, just something to see if it works and uh, there's hundreds of thousands of videos about refresh rates and things like that so i may have to invest in a 144 hertz monitor at some point but uh so thank you very much for watching this video uh let me just stall the engine so you can actually hear what i'm saying uh thanks very much for watching i've been Andy board and like i say if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more sim racing stuff or uh story time pressing issues that kind of thing or i'll do a highlight video of the last uh race or star esports battle contest petition thing uh, later in the week uh, so yeah subscribe if you want to see that kind of stuff and also massive thanks as always go out to the patrons of this channel I know that donating money to YouTubers and, and things like that is uh, going to be difficult right now but you know your support is still very much appreciated uh, you know it's, it's not about the money to be honest it, you know, or, or you know, anything like that so yeah it, it's hard to do unscripted videos but until next time I've been Aidenborn have a crack of day where you live in the world and I'll see you all again next time for another video so until then goodbye